Welcome back. The arts have played such a major role for so many just getting through these last two years. And I'm thrilled to introduce our next guests who are here representing one of the nation's most innovative and forward thinking organizations, the Richmond Symphony Orchestra in Richmond, Virginia. I have the honor of introducing to you the board chair, Elizabeth Cabell Jennings, the music director, Valentina Pileggi, and the executive director, Lacey Kusha. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. It's really a pleasure. So I really have to ask, you are each new to these positions and what in the world made you think that COVID was a good time to take a giant leap into something so new? Elizabeth, let me start with you. Well, um, I don't know that COVID made us take a leap into something new because we've been, we've been pressing the edge of the envelope, if you will, in new directions for a number of years. COVID, um, as dreadful as it was for the community and the country, provided an opportunity to, to take that effort to the next level, if you will. But going back um, a number of years, our, our use of the big tent to take music out to the community was a demonstration on the part of the executive director at that point, the staff and the board leadership and the entire board um, to bring music to the community in furtherance of our mission. And COVID was another opportunity to do that as difficult as it was to imagine the circumstances under which we were operating. I can only imagine. Lacey, what do you what do you have on that one? <laughs> yeah, I will say it's a very interesting time to start a new job. On the one hand, um, very challenging for obvious reasons that don't need to be explained. Um, but on the other hand, very freeing, because when you can't do anything the same as was done before, you really are forced to not only have the opportunity to uh, take a look at that and, and build on what came before, but to be able to create new changes, um, face those obstacles with uh, new energy. And we really have the community and the support here in Richmond um, and the artistry to be able to do exciting and bold things. So in many ways, um, a great time to start something new, uh, though certainly came with challenges in and of itself. And Valentina, you came from Italy. So you really, yeah. I would say, had the most giant leap here. Why did you decide to <laughs> go true. for it? Yeah, hello, Ron, and, and hi, everybody. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I started as music director of the Richmond Symphony in July 2020, so really in the middle of the first wave of the pandemic, and it was surely a time of great uncertainty, but at the same time, that was the time where the organizations really had the responsibility to be there for their communities. So that was the moment to think outside of the box, to create opportunities to unite people that were forced to be a part to draft meaningful programs that could not only tell stories, but that could really connect deeply people, either virtually or in person. So I'm very proud of the Richmond Symphony because during all this time, leadership, board, musicians, we were really all one. And uh, not only we kept playing, we bonded strongly and we drafted together solutions and ideas that could at the same time, respect all the limitations, but also could allow us to keep growing artistically. It's amazing. I, I know you really committed to not, not letting go of any single person. Everyone, let, let's just say the music kept playing throughout and that was really remarkable. Elizabeth, what do you believe is the true uniqueness of the Richmond Symphony? Well, every organization is going to be a, a representation of its community. And so no one symphony is going to be the same from one city to another. And Richmond is a unique community with unique challenges, in particular at this moment of history. Uh, we have fractures in our community that have been visible um, on the world stage, and we're working to, to heal those. And the symphony, as a, as a reflection of that, offers a a space where lots of different parts of our community can come together, whether they come together physically in the concert hall, physically at a big tent concert or virtually through a, a streamed performance, they can come together over something that they have a, a shared commitment to. And you know, different, different communities will respond differently to some of the changes that we're seeing in society now. But I think the, I think the 
Richmond Symphony has made a, a you know, pronounced effort to live out our mission of changing lives through the power of music, however that expresses itself. And has the community shown up? Yes, and we, you know, it's a little hard when you've got to have a face mask and a vaccination card and, and an ID. So, um, but when we when we're able to do public events, and Valentina and Lacey can talk about that, um, outdoor events in particularly, we've had um, enthusiastic response. And I will say, I just couldn't be prouder to be a part of the organization. Um, you said kept the music playing. I, I view what we did during COVID as we we kept the light shining in the darkness and we're able to reach into people's homes, into retirement communities, into lots of different parts of the city that were cold and dark and scared. And hopefully we brought a little, a little light to the conversation. I love that. Thank you for sharing that light, that light reference. Lacey, how did your strategies over the last year, do you think make a difference in Richmond or for the symphony at large? Yes, uh, well, as Elizabeth mentioned, um, you know, our vision statement of changing lives through the power of music really encouraged us and gave us the sort of requirement to continue, uh, we felt as an organization. And to do that, we really had to change the way we approached. I mean, the, the complications of presenting concerts um, in the fall of 2020, uh, I'm not really sure they could be overstated. Uh, we had 10 foot distancing between musicians and any musician out there knows that is really far away from somebody you're trying to communicate with artistically. It also meant the number of people on the stage changed dramatically. So Valentina had to work with our team to create new programs. And as the year went on and, um, you know, we realized that this was going to be a set of restrictions we might have for longer than we might have originally hoped, uh, we started shifting a lot of our strategies. Um, we took our programs virtual to make sure that we could reach more than the 250 people that were allowed in our concert hall at that time, um, be able to get to our at-home audience. If anyone felt sick, they knew they wouldn't have to miss the concert, um, or if they just felt like it would be safer to stay home, they had still had a way to connect to the music. Um, we took our programs out into the park. Elizabeth mentioned our big tent initiative. Um, where we would take our a literal tent that we own, uh, put it up in a park and create a big community festival. Well, our ability to do that shifted a little bit, but our commitment to do it didn't. And so we worked on a, a new program for that called the Mile of Music, uh, where we took chamber ensembles in a literal mile around one of the parks here in Richmond, invited audiences to come, bring their families, bring their dogs, they could walk, they could be outside where we knew it was safer, and they could still really experience the intimacy of music. And it just created a whole new way for us to connect to our city, to our audience, to our patrons, to people who'd never seen us before. Um, and hopefully, as Elizabeth said, provide that light in the darkness. And I'm, I'm assuming that these are going to continue because these are amazing initiatives as you list them one by one. Valentina, I'd love to know if all of this changed the way you selected what music got played and, and the content of the performance. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the last couple of years taught us how to transform challenges into opportunities. So when we weren't allowed to perform with the full orchestra, we, we went smaller and created chamber groups for performing um, in a variety of different venues and for most varied audiences from, I don't know, home cares to virtual schools, to coffee places, to breweries, so pairing classical music with beer tasting, to museums, so pairing now paintings with classical music, making the gallery sounding. So we also redrafted completely our main masterwork series with maximum 24 players on stage, discovering, as you were mentioning, a wide range of incredible, beautiful repertoire that was never performed before. So we created the opportunity to spend time with the orchestra sections. So for example, strings or woodwinds, brass percussion, working on a specific repertoire and using these chances for developing cohesion in the sections and pushing the artistic level. So during the pandemic, we not only started a virtual school of music or artist residencies, which is already a lot, but we kept looking at the future while remaining deeply connected with the present, celebrating stories of our own cities. For example, the first program uh, uh, I offered as music director was back in September 2020. It was an open air 
uh, event with our big tent and it was called African American Voices where we partnered with uh, um, play writer Morgan Avery McCoy and actors narrating the lives of black people who worked on Maymont Park and was it was a it was a great event so that made us even more connected with our musicians and our community and it made us focus on what is really important so relevance and and excellence so we we really want to continue on this you know our theme for this show is diversity and inclusion and every time you tell a story any of you all i feel is included I feel like everyone is being invited. Everyone is being included. You've really taken the time to explore ways to reach out and create a, an even greater sense of belonging within Richmond, which I know is already a very special city and almost village uh, you know, existence. So I'm gonna ask you one by one, ladies, in an ideal world, when you look back one year from today, what do you most hope to see your work result? Lacey, let's start with you. Sure. Um, I, you know, one of our one of our goals is to make uh, music central to the lives of people living, learning, and working here in Richmond, and um, that's a big goal. Uh, it's a lot of people um, with a lot of different focuses in their in their day, but. A year from now, I really want to see each of these things we've started, whether it's concerts in parks, whether it's telling the stories of the people uniquely in Richmond, um, reaching the people in our city in, in new and meaningful ways. And um, it's sort of a hard thing, I think, to quantify, but it's something that I know we will feel as an organization uh, very differently than the feeling, the still very incredible feeling of that just presenting a great concert um, on a wonderful Saturday night, but that increased connection with the people who live, learn, and work in Richmond. Super. Elizabeth, how about you? Well, she, there might be more than one thing. Uh, so a year from now, one of, one of the things I can't overemphasize is um, the strengthening of the, the bonds between the musicians and the staff and the board during this sort of testing time for the symphony. And when I look forward a year, I hope those bonds become even even stronger and more resilient um, because the partnership has been a wonderful, robust um, part of our community. In doing that, as the situation continues to change in the world, um, we need to become even more so than we are now a learning organization where we're able to see a little bit around corners and adapt proactively to changes in the world in our community and carry out that mission that Lacey has expressed because the way we do that a year from now or two years from now or five years from now might look different than the way we do it today. And we need to be prepared to um, be, be flexible and anticipatory of the changes that are um, going to come our way. And Valentina, how about you? You asked what I hope to see, and um, please apologies for this. I, I would say first, I don't hope to see, I plan to see. <laughs> so, <laughs> for, example, for, <laughs> for example, we started working on orchestral sectionals out of necessity, right? Due to the limitations on stage. Well, but we transformed that into sectionals. And even now that we are allowed to perform on stage with the full orchestra, we kept, we decided to keep sectionals for working on sound as a group, which has a huge impact on artistic level. Or for example, we started chamber groups out of emergency, right? But we are still nurturing these. And even now and for the future, because the orchestra, it is a big chamber group and our own musicians can benefit hugely from playing with colleagues in, in smaller groups. Plus, it enables us to travel to many different venues and reach different audiences. And finally, in, in, these, uh, in these couple of years, we discovered a real deep connection with our audience. And that's what we want to nurture and keep de developing. We, we really want an orchestra that could be the best they can. We want an orchestra that is happy. We want our community to be proud of their own orchestra. And finally, we want our orchestra to be a, 
a lighthouse, a reference of hope and artistic excellence for our community. Wow. Well, that is definitely a mission to live up to. And I can honestly say to my viewers right this minute, if you are in the area of Richmond, Virginia, or if you're not and you're looking for a destination, please run, don't walk. I, there is so much to be experienced through the symphony and through the other creative aspects that that the three of you are absolutely and I know it's not just the three of you but but the organization is really tying into the community in so many special ways I I really have to say I love especially how you're tying it to the art how you're you're sharing you know the feeling of art or a painting along with the feeling of of the music of a specific piece or in the brewery this i love how the characteristics of the brews are tied to the characteristics of the songs and hey, thank you for being with us thank you thank, thank you for having us and we'll be right back <laughs>